Hello everyone, today we are going to cook an unrealistically long shawarma. Presumably it will take four days to prepare it. The first day, let's start it by marinating a whole chicken. To do this, take a pot of water and send in six tablespoons of salt. Six tablespoons of sugar. A mixture of peppers, coriander, and bay leaves. After that, we send the pan to the burner and boil for 15 minutes. We leave this brine outside to cool and immerse the chicken so that the marinade completely covers it. We send this into the refrigerator for three days. It's necessary that this brine completely penetrates the chicken. The second type of meat will be such a lamb cut. We make incisions between each rib. After which we pass under the rib itself with a knife and completely cut it out while losing as little meat as possible. Repeat this with all the remaining edges. Done. All the edges are removed. The part of the cut that is thicker we cut. and unfold so that the whole piece of meat turns out to be the same thickness. We turn the cut to the other side and cut out the small bones remaining from the spine. And cut off any excess fat. For the marinade at the market, we collected a set of spices for the lamb. Pour this into a bowl. Also open up some homemade ajika. And pour that into the bowl as well. Add a lot of salt. And pour in some oil. Now all you need to do is just mix it all up. We transfer this all to the piece of meat and rub the marinade thoroughly with our hands. We roll this all up into a really dense roll. Transfer it to some food fill and seal the roll tightly. Now we leave this in the refrigerator for three days. Day two. We decided to make one of my most favorite, but very long in cooking, Narsharub sauce. It's a pomegranate sauce. To clean them quickly, cut off the top of the pomegranate. Now the white membranes are visible between the grains. That's exactly what you need to make the incisions on them. We open up the pomegranate. And now we just knock out the juicy seeds with a tablespoon. Also, these white membranes can interfere with the loss of the seeds. We remove them as well.
We repeat the same thing with the rest of the pomegranates. left with a lot of juicy seeds. We need to get the juice out of them, so we just crush them. Done. Now we put a sieve on the saucepan and filter out all the juice. Squeeze out the remaining juice from the grains with a tablespoon. Done. We got the purest natural pomegranate juice. We put this on the stove and wait until it boils. After that, we make the heating less than average so that the juice barely bubbles. And after about six hours, it evaporates to such a state of syrup. Pour it into a bowl. After cooling, the Nahara sauce is completely ready. Day three. Let's start with carrots. We've cut them in half, then try to cut them into as thin slices as possible. Then we chop them into thin straws. Done. We transfer the sliced carrots into a bowl and salt them. We carefully rub it around with our hands so that the carrot releases its juices. Let's crush a garlic head. Then peel a couple of cloves. Crush them. And grind them into the bowl. Throw them in there. Here are a couple of pinches of sugar. Put a saucepan on the stove and pour in some oil into it. A mixture of peppers with peas in a mortar. And grind that into the powder. Let's set it into the oil. This includes marjoram, turmeric, ground coriander, and mustard peas. We heat the spices in oil so that they reveal their flavor to the maximum and pour them into the carrots. Now mix it up. Now we just need to add some apple cider vinegar, mix for one more time, and put this all into the jar. We leave this to marinate for one day in the refrigerator. For the main sauce, let's squeeze out some mayonnaise, kefir, and sour cream into a bowl. For spices, add some hot pepper, curry seasoning, hop sunelli, and salt. Finally, chop up some dill. Crush some garlic, and dice finely. Add to the sauce, and mix it up well. The sauce is ready. Now let's take some cabbage and cut it in half and finally chop it. Transfer to a bowl. We'll need it for tomorrow. And the last
last thing we need to do for today is make some pita bread. Pour some flour into a bowl, add salt, pour in a little bit of oil, and some boiling water. Knead the dough first with a spoon, and then with your hands. Dust the table with flour, tear off part of the dough, and roll it into a thin layer. Done. Now let's top some wood. In order for the lavash to have the smell of smoke, we will cook it on a campfire. Put some dry fuel in the oven and ignite. Install a large frying pan in the oven and spread the dough out on it. Meanwhile, we roll out the next piece. Bubbles begin to appear on the lavash bread, so we turn it over. for another minute until it's ready. We send the next layer of dough onto the frying pan. After that, we wrap it all in plastic wrap so that the pita bread remains soft. Now we've got our fourth day yet, the largest day in terms of work. The chicken has already been completely marinated, and we will smoke it in a smoker. We fill up the coal, and we distribute it with a distributor. Then we take some wood chips from a fruit tree and scatter them on top of the coal. and ignite it on one side. The coal will gradually burn out, and the smoke chips in this system should be enough for the whole day. We soak the chicken with paper towels so that there is no moisture left on it. We close the compartment with coal, and we send the chicken itself to the second one. Smoke will pass right through it, and by evening it will be super smoked. That's it, let's close the smoker. Potatoes will also go into our shawarma, so we peel them. and cut it first into some thick slices. And then into cubes, like french fries. Done. We light a good fire on the stove, pour a lot of oil into the frying pan, and fry the potatoes. every couple of minutes so that they're all golden all over. We put the finished potatoes on a tray. The third type of meat in our shawarma will be beef, namely beef cheeks. It is necessary to thoroughly clean them from a very large number of films. Done. Thoroughly salt, pour some oil over it, and rub that all into the cheeks. First, fry them on the gas grill for literally two minutes. In 
and turn them over. You need to get a good crust on them. After that, we put the pan on the stove and transfer the meat into it. Pour some red wine on top. Put a sprig of thyme in there and rosemary. Top up with water and cover with a lid. We leave them to languish slowly for four hours and they're ready. In the grill, we put a bowl for ignition, fill it with coals, set fire to the dry fuel, and put the coals on to ignite. We take out our lamb roll from the refrigerator, which has been marinating for three days, and cut it into pieces right in the film. Put them on skewers so that the rolls do not unwind. Done. The coals are already well lit. Put them onto the grill and distribute. That's it, we're going to start frying our shish kebabs. That's for five minutes and we turn over the skewers. We put the ready-made shish kebab on a tray. But of course, such meat will not go into the shawarma itself in the form of a kebab. We remove it from the skewer and cut them into very thin slices. The slices are then transferred to a tray. At a very low temperature, our chicken was smoked all day. And this girl is definitely ready. It turned out very beautiful. We take it out of the smoker. And we cut it up too. Finally chop the chicken. And send that over to the lamb. Now it's time for the beef cheeks. The meat has been languishing for a very long time, so we don't cut into it. It simply tears into fibers and send the third type of meat to the tray. Tomatoes and cucumbers will also come from vegetables, so we cut them. So 
all the ingredients for our shawarma, which we've been preparing for four days already. Let's finally assemble a shawarma. We put the main sauce on the pita bread. Spread out the beef. Potato. Tomatoes for juiciness. And the super smoked chicken meat. We spread out some cucumbers. Cabbage. Korean style carrots. Pieces of lamb. Pour all this over with the divine Narsha Rup sauce. And roll up our shawarma. Now we just need to grill it. Done. Our shawarma, which we've been cooking for four days, is completely ready. Let's cut into it. Inside, it turned out very beautiful. Well, are we gonna try it? This is a very tasty shawarma, and in every bite, you can feel the taste of each ingredient. The lavash is not just store-bought, but soaked in the aroma of a campfire. Beef fibers with a slight aftertaste of wine, super juicy smoked chicken, and soft lamb slices with sweet pomegranate sauce. It is just awesome. And if this video gets 200,000 likes, then we will continue on with this experiment. Write in the comments what else I can cook in 100 hours. Bye, everybody.